what Jesus said. I came to tell you what Jesus said. I came to tell you what Jesus said. said. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Oh, I came to tell you what Jesus said. I came to tell you what Jesus said. I came to tell you what Jesus said. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Yeah. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Say, I came to tell you what Jesus said. I came to tell you what Jesus said. He said Repent of your sins and be baptized. Oh, Repent of your sins and be baptized. Oh, he stepped in the water. Uh -huh. The water was cold. Uh -huh. Welcome you to Liberty Temple Christian Church uh, worship service today. Thank you for all that have logged in. Our praise team is going to lead us in worship. And then following them, we're going to have five of our ministers. They're going to give uh, short words of encouragement. So I know just be looking forward to hearing those words of encouragement on today. Uh, the service today will also be audio only. So I want you to just sit back and enjoy as the praise team and then our uh, ministers shall come. So he that has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is going to say unto the church today. Change me, O oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. Create in me a clean heart so that I may worship you. Change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. Create in me a clean heart so that. Worship you. I need you to change me. Change me like only you can, Lord. Change me. Do it for me, Lord. Change me. Do it for me, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. 
silver and gold, silver and gold. I'd rather have cheese than silver and gold. No fame or fortune, no riches untold. I'd rather have cheese than silver and gold. Don't give me a mansion on top of a hill. Don't give me the world with a shallow thrill. But just give me a savior. My life he can more. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold, silver and gold. feeling kind of down I called on my best friend but she could never be found but then I called on Jesus for my life he came more I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold, silver and gold. Good morning. Uh, we're going to be uh, coming out of um, the 20th chapter of Second Chronicles, uh, one verse that I just want to leave with you. Uh, the Bible saying, he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, not dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. And I want to title this this morning, short and brief. Stop, don't fight your own battles, but let God fight it for you. We know that in this particular chapter, Jehoshaphat was in distress, and which he was followed by such a glorious deliverance as was an abundance recompense for his spirit. A formidable invasion of Jehoshaphat's kingdom by the Moabites and the Ammonites, but Jehoshaphat was surprised when the enemy has uh, entered his, his uh, uh, country. So when Israel was threatened by the mighty forces of these Amalekites and Rephidim, God gave them supernatural victory, realizing that God was fighting the battle uh, 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 for them. Uh, the preparation Jehoshaphat made against the invaders, he proclaimed a fair throughout all Judah and appointed a day of humiliation and even a day of prayer that they might join together in confessing their sins and asking help 
of the Lord. Uh, we cannot do this on our own. It takes God's help to take us through and to see us through. Uh, so, uh, 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 the forces of Amalek are rough for them. God gave them a supernatural victory, realizing that God was fighting the battles for them. Even Moses, when he had built an altar, uh, altar uh, to Jehovah Nisa, saying, The Lord is my battle. Uh, the Lord, uh, which meaning, uh, no matter what you're going through with, we can hold up our banner knowing that the Lord will fight for us and that he will go through for us. And in Exodus 15, 17 and 15, say, hear his word. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Exodus 14 and 14, uh, be not dismayed, be not afraid for the battle is not your, but God. So we uh, uh, see this morning that no matter what we're going through with, we have to realize that we have to stand on God's eternal word. That his word will fight for us. His word will go through for us. You don't have to uh, 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 fight your enemy. Let God fight him for you. Then uh, uh, we see uh, this morning in this particular uh, 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 chapter that uh, in, in the fourth verse of Judah that gave them, uh, gathered themselves uh, together to ask help of the Lord even out of all of the cities of Judah. But they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And then he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the either? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to uh, uh, to withstand thee. Uh, meaning that uh, uh, you engage in a fruitless cycle of repentance uh, uh, not only repentance, but you engage in a fruitless cycle of resolutions, struggles, defeat, and discouragement, which leads to more repenting. The only sort of spiritual conflict that ever successfully won uh, is the one God fights for you. He doesn't expect you to win the battle, but only to surrender to him and let him win it for you. So no matter how many nations and these armies that came up against you, Osaphat, the rest of them, God was able to bring you through, and he's able to bring you out. The Bible said we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And then, uh, but the only to surrender to him and let him fight it to win it for you. So am I not supposed to fight it at all, you ask? You are to fight the good fight of faith, according to 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Yours isn't a battle of exhaustion effort. But it is the battle of believing. But I'm not uh, uh, to wrestle like Jacob did. Observe two things. Jacob didn't win it by wrestling. He won it by rendering too weak to continue wrestling. Sometimes we get a little weak. And sometimes we give in. But Saul, Paul said, when I'm weak, then I am strong. But knowing that you got your almighty God, our Father is right there by our side. Uh, according to 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. And then Jacob's victory lay in his surrender. Are you worn out from the battle of the, uh, uh, of the end of your rope? You may be just where God wants you, but let go and trust your Jehovah Nisi to prevail for you because the battle is not yours and uh, it's the Lord. So remember that he is uh, 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 your um, a banner, your Jehovah Nisi, he is uh, your Jehovah Jireh, the God that will provide. He is your God of peace. He is Jehovah Shalom. Uh, he is uh, 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 the God of righteousness. And he is the Lord that will be right there for you. And then he went on down and to say, in my final closing this morning, uh, in the 16th verse, he said, tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. And ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. But ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Just set yourself. Stand ye still. As he said back in Moses in, in the book of Exodus. Told Moses stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. And then O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow you go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. And then Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face. To the ground. And then all Judah and all those inhabitants of Jerusalem, they fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. 
And even the Levites of the children of the Korvites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And that's the reason we should praise even in spite of this pandemic, even in spite of this crisis that we're going through. With. We got to give God praise. The Bible said in the Psalm 150, the latter verse, he said, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And then verse 20 said, they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of the core. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so ye shall be established. Believe his prophet, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, listen here, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that shall praise the beauty of holiness. God will always come through for you. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush again against those children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which will come against Judah, and they will smite. You don't have to fight your enemy. Just be still and let God fight them for you. So in my final closing this morning, as I said, stop. Don't try to fight your own battle, but just let God fight it for you. As he warned this for Jehoshaphat, and these armies that was kind of come up against these nations, God will go through for you. Just give it to the Lord. Give it to him. And trust him when you give it to him. And don't try to take it back. Let him work it out. Might not be tomorrow. Might not be next month. Might not be next year. But in his own time, he will work it out. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. May God bless you. May he keep you. And may heaven help a smile upon you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, saints. This is Elder Dwayne Givens. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. The title of my sermon today will be, Do You Trust God? 3, 5 says, Trust the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The word trust carries a meaningful meaning. It says, trust the Lord all thine heart. That means you cannot have any aspect of your thought pattern that does not line up to trust in God. For in the scripture, we find uh, the understanding what Matthew 22, verse 37 says. It says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and all your strength. Should be the pattern we have when we trust. We can't let anything that will hinder us from serving God by an understanding that we may have. For in the scripture it said, trust the Lord all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In other words, we shouldn't let our thought pattern or mindset go against what God requires. Because what we think is pretty much regulated by what is the case of being a part of this world system. The thought pattern that is associated with sin. The thought pattern is more advantageous to oneself in exchange of serving God. He said, trust the Lord all that heart. Trust the Lord all your heart. That means you cannot have any exception if you want to be right in God's sight. Too often we are fed a menu of items that said these things are more advantageous than serving God. How much of our trust is based on serving God with all our faith, all our belief, all our obedience and all of our commitment. But what then knows if we can do all four of those, we can hold up trust based on the word agape love. A love for God and loving him in every aspect of our lives because God will provide for us what we can't provide for ourselves. In fact, God will show you what you need to do so when you're doing wrong, he can stop you and guide you. In fact, he will protect you when you're self think you all many times are right when in reality you're wrong. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. How much of our heart is mandated by things that we have uh, sought to please ourselves, And in, in exchange, we seek not to please God. The comparison, the contrast, shall I say here, is he said, trust, the Bible says, trust in God with all our heart. 
and lean not to our own understanding. There is a competitive battle right there. What is man? What we feel is advantageous to oneself in exchange for serving God. How many of us right now think doing or doing this or doing that based on what we consider to be right when in reality is not right? That's why the Bible tells us to study his word to learn of him, to know what God mandates will keep you out of trouble and get you his blessing. We're going through a situation nowadays with this uh, pandemic. The environment is, is being suffering, is suffering because of the unfortunate virus that's affecting not just people here in this area, but all across the world. Those above water, those in the air, as well as those on the land, those in various positions, be from presidential levels, kings level down to a local, uh, let's say, homeless person. People are suffering right now. A need to understand is God's requirement to serve him, for we all were sent here to do just that, to serve God. And many of our decisions right now was brought on this problem in the beginning with Adam and Eve, that they chose to serve their needs versus what serving God's mandated. A mandate that is noted in the word trust. You have to believe that God will provide for every one of your needs, his sickness, your health, your finances, whatever it might be. God is the one that gives you the ability to do these things. If you need money, God can provide it. If you need help to healing, God can provide, provide it. Just think about it. Your body said you're sick, but God said you're healed. Who has the great authority? God said by, his, by Jesus' stripes, stripe, we are healed. So therefore, who has the greater answer to our problem? Our bank account may say we're down to less than, almost down to minimal, if not close to zero. But God said you're rich. Who do you trust? Who do you believe? Because God can send one penny to you, that one penny be worth a million dollars, brothers and sisters. You say, how is that the case? God makes it possible to make everything possible. For all, Luke 137 says, nothing impossible for the Lord. So just trust in God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Don't be locked in to the situation. Because situation is mandated by a system that Satan so, so has so orchestrated for us to suffer under. But we trust in God, my Lord, he will provide. He will sustain you. He is your peace. In the midst of tribulation, he is your joy in the midst of destruction or disaster. He is all that and more. If you just believe in him, he's already stated himself in the six six books. He said, "Trust in God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Be obedient to God's will." We may be going through something. When the Lord's on your side, you never lose. You may be in a situation where you want to give up, but just begin to give God the glory for the victory is yet to come. Victory is going to be all that God has for you if you're serving him again with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Trust God. For you know you have need of before you even pray. Matthew 6, 8 says he knows what you have need of before you bow down to pray to him. Just trust in him. Can you trust God to pay your tithes? Can you trust God to help the sick? Can you trust God to be a blessing to the needy? Can you trust God to give clothing to those without? Can you trust God in all that he says do? Watch out and see what he will do for you. The Lord will never leave you, forsake you. He said he'll never leave you, forsake you. So why would you not trust him? The Bible says he cannot lie. Mm. God said, your trees in your backyard are yellow. You look at it and say, they're green. Look again. They just might be yellow. If that's God's will. Whatever he wants done, trust in him. We're at a time where we need God to help us make it through this environment, this situation, this problem, affecting all household health, sickness, unfortunate death. But God has full authority. The Bible says the fullness of the earth is full of everything is God and, is, and Lord has full authority. If you read Colossians 1, 16, it lets us know that everything, every single thing was created for God's pleasure and for God's purpose only. Just trust in the Lord and be mindful of it. I ask you, brother and sister, as you go through life, make sure that you do one particular thing. Uh, what says in Psalm 91 and 1, so he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, 
He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. Will you trust in God right now? Will you trust that God will provide for what you need? Just thank him. Just give glory unto him. He knows everything, brothers and sisters. Psalms 34, 8 said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is, is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. And I'll say it again. Blessed is the man or woman that trusts in God. For taste and see how good he is. He is magnificent. He is a joy, brothers and sisters. He is a light unto darkness. He is the being that create the bridge across the problem. He will take you wherever you need to be taken. Trust in God. The day is, of course, how deep is your trust in God? How deep is it that you trust God over everything else? For all that we live and see is all because of God's blessing. Trust in him right now, brothers and sisters. Don't let your mind be overcome by the thing that the world says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, because he said, if you trust in him, seek him. My Lord, he said, he will direct your paths. Lean not to thy own understanding, for God will be there in the time of trouble. And we're going through trouble. God is there right now. If you just seek him with all your heart, all your soul and mind. Brothers and sisters, turn your life over to God and see the victory that comes about serving God. He is trustworthy. The issue is how trustworthy are you to trust him? Stop worrying about your situation. Worry about serving God. And you're going to see blessing beyond your imagination through the grace of God. Be strong. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give thanks and praise to everyone. In God's name, bless everyone. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, today, our scripture reading is coming from Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 through 23 in your reading and in your hearing, verses 20 through 23. I'll be reading from the NIV version, and it reads, Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in, prison, in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Now, Joseph is a very interesting character in the Bible. A lot of things happened to Joseph on the way to getting here at this point. Joseph was the 11th son of Jacob, and he was his first son through his favorite wife, Rachel. Um, so it says in chapter 37 of Genesis, um, it ended up where Joseph's brother sold him to a high-ranking Egyptian named Potiphar, and eventually he became the supervisor of Potiphar's household. And let's not forget, when we talk about Egypt, we're talking about Africa. So these are people of color. One day, Potiphar's wife caught Joseph by the cloak, and again, she was trying to make sexual advances towards him, but Joseph tried to be honest. He tried to be faithful. He didn't want to disappoint his master. And most of all, he did not want to sin against God. So he left, running away from her. She ended up with his cloak in her hand. And because she didn't get what she wanted, she falsely accused Joseph of attempting to rape her. She told her husband Potiphar about this. And Potiphar ended up putting him in prison. Another choice that Potiphar could have done was to have him killed or kill him himself. But because I believe that he also still favored uh, Joseph for his ability to help him with so many things and to make him a success, I believe that he gave him the sentence of going over to the king's prison 
rather than have him killed because of that favor. Now, unfortunately, it's not always the case when the innocent is accused of something they did wrong, that they come out squeaky clean. But in Joseph's case, because God was with him, he came out squeaky clean. And I'm glad to say that. Because in our times right now, we see a lot of people, our people who are being unjustly arrested, killed, murdered, just a lot of malicious things done to them, all for the sake of evil. But it's good to see that even in Joseph's time, if you have God on your side, that things like that you can get past and get through. So even though he's falsely accused and he's in jail, he does not get a bitter mindset or a mindset to want to attack and be evil or downtrodden or sad and give up on life. Because when he gets there, he eventually finds favor with the warden. So it must have been some substantial amount of time that he was in that prison to have gained a reputation to be in charge of other prisoners. So it's really a blessing that he ended up where he was but more of a blessing that he knew who he was and who he belonged to. So I encourage you, my sisters and my brothers, that wherever you find yourself at, that you remember who you belong to and that he is with you. Now, the reality is Joseph moved from Potiphar's house closer to the king. Had not this situation happened, Joseph would not have ever been able to have an audience with the king. Because while he was in jail, he was exercising his spiritual gift. He was exercising strong faith. He was exercising leadership, integrity. And he was faithful to his God. During that time in prison, he was being protected by his God for a purpose because there was a call on his life. When God gives you a purpose and there's a call on your life, anything could happen, but it's still going to come to pass. How you get through it it's going to be up to you. How faithful you are is up to you. So in our time of confinement, we need to realize that God is ever present and that he is protecting us. There are forces that is in this world that are so evil we can't possibly fight. But God has a band of angels surrounding us. He is protecting us each and every second of the day. He is here with us, hearing us, seeing us, waiting on us. So we are to give us our own self time to reflect, to have a moment of solace, to gather up our thoughts and our mind to give our hearts back to God on a daily basis because we still have a purpose and that's why we're still on the planet. He's given us the opportunity to be to open up our hearts to a community of people who don't like us, who abuse us and mistreat us in so many ungodly ways. But because God's heart is open to them, we have to be open to them as well. As difficult as it may seem. And I pray tell no that I cannot do it without God within me. We must maintain our faith. 
even more now than ever before. Faithful, strength, strength, faithful, I mean to say faithful, strong Christians should be on the front line because we're still in a fight. I look at Joseph and I saw that even while he was there, how God's name is still illuminated. The people associated his gift with his God. And he also humbled himself to let Pharaoh know when he went in to interpret his dreams. I can't do this, but God can. And so when our troubles come, when things happen and we feel like we can't do it, we can always say to ourselves, I can't do this, but God can. Especially if you know that the gift was given to you to do that. We must always acknowledge that God is the source of our power. God is love. And because he is love, we can love while we are in jail. I love you all. God bless you. To thine be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Liberty. Um, I'll take my text from Ezekiel 37 and 9. And the text is breathe. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And as we view the events of the day, the injustice of a law enforcer kneeling on the neck of a man until the air leaves his body and he dies, or the effects of the coronavirus that attacks the lungs until the air leaves the body of a person and they die. The intended purpose of the devil is to kill, steal, and destroy, and to take the breath away. We must view this from a spiritual perspective. It is also the intent of the devil to take our breath away through these heartbreaking images and news events. Many will call these days of desperate times. Dr. Martin Luther King called it the urgency of the moment. And to that I agree. Desperation will lead to two emotions, fear and anger. Urgency of the moment will lead to action as viewed by the worldwide protests against injustice. When I was a little boy, there would be times of desperation when I would run to my mother because of fear and because of panic, I couldn't get the words out because without even realizing it, I had forgot to keep breathing. My mother would put her hands on my face and say, Morris, look at me. And she would say, breathe, son. And sometimes she would demonstrate how I should breathing, be breathing by breathing out loudly. And I would begin to breathe again and tell her the reason for my desperation. There were times when I would run in desperation because of siblings angered me and again I would lose my breath. The words of hatred and racism from high places in these urgent times will leave you in a place of anger. And if you focus on it, a place of bitterness. As the world takes its protest to the streets in urgency, we as the earth church must take our protest to the streets of heaven before the throne of God. To seek a word from God 
is there a word from the Lord in these urgent times? And I say, yes, there is a word from the Lord. And the Lord will take your face in his hands and say, breathe. Breathe because I am that I am. Breathe because I am the sovereign God. Breathe because no evil will befall you. Breathe because I am a God of justice. Breathe because it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Breathe because I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Because the spirit of the Lord has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. So see the hand of God and not the face of the enemy that distracts you from the truth of God's word. Michael Smith wrote a song, Great Are You, Lord. In the verse, it is your breath in our lungs. So breathe. Don't allow the enemy to take your breath away through fear or anger. Another songwriter wrote these words, when the pathway, Lord, I cannot see, when the way is dark, Lord, breathe on me. Let it breathe on me, let it breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe on me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. All over the world, people are crying out, I can't breathe. This is not just for George Floyd. This is a call to the church for help. They cannot breathe because they need us to breathe on them. This is why the church has been on pause. It is time to open our eyes and ears to fulfill the Great Commission. The coronavirus and George Floyd televised murder is no coincidence. It is a plan to save life if we will understand the urgency of this moment. It's time to act before we go back into our buildings and shut the doors. It's time to breathe on the world, to breathe the gospel, to breathe hope and healing. The president said a light can be put in the body for healing. The truth is a light will come out of the body of the church for healing. There's a new emancipation and that is the church being set free, the church breathing again. When I spoke of forgetting to breathe when I was a child, the church has forgot to breathe and Christ in us must demonstrate again how to breathe. Inhale the love of God and exhale life to the world. Breathe in his love and compassion and exhale hope. Breathe his word and breathe out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Breathe. Ezekiel 37, four through 14. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dark dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones became together, bone to its bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, 
Thus saith the Lord God, Come for the four winds, O breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people and brought you out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. So breathe, church. It was God's people that Ezekiel was to, uh, prophesying to. Have you forgot how to breathe? Breathing is a place of peace and rest and abundant life. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come that we might have life and that more abundantly. A baby when it's first born is slapped on the backside to shock it into breathing. And I think us Christians have to get slapped on the backside to shock us into breathing again. The first church had to suffer persecution to affect the world and to turn it upside down with the gospel. So let us wake up and breathe. The world is crying out, I can't breathe. We must give them CPR, Christ powered resuscitation. God bless you. Good morning or good afternoon, whichever is uh, more feasible to you. Um, I want to give honor to God who's first in my life. Um, I want to uh, thank Pastor Hughley, First Lady, uh, Liberty Church family, friends. Um, I just wanted to um, give a little word on uh, encouragement. You know, um, everybody needs encouragement. You know, it's, it's, especially with the way things are going right now, everybody needs encouragement. So um, I pray, what I pray right now is I pray that, you know, everything I say today would, uh, would lead to some encouragement, maybe lead to some breakthroughs. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. Um, I just wanna start off by saying the word of God tells us um, not to lose our confidence, you know, which is a great reward. Um, our spiritual victory clearly depends on um, our faith. Uh, the life we live can sometimes, I know, be challenging at times, and, uh, and, you know, we all need encouragement. You know, we all need someone to lift us up. You know, uh, you know, uh, that's a great legacy to leave behind, you know, because we are going to leave here one day. But, you know, what a legacy to be known as someone who's always lifted others up or someone who, who uh, was always encouraging others. You know, I mean, it's, take, it's taken me many years to learn that one good word of encouragement um, can actually inspire um, and maybe physically help. Um, someone, you know, uh, we all need encouragement and no one is exempt. You know, uh, my prayer is that through this message that God would inspire you to, uh, to become more encouraged um, surrounding the situation that's going on right now. Um, but God, God is so good. Um, God is always working um, on our blessings or he's working on your blessings. You know, God is always working on a way to bring us out. You know, somebody, like right now, somebody's going to have a breakthrough today. Somebody's mortgage is, is about to turn. Somebody's house is in foreclosure, and it's about to turn in their favor. God is in the blessing business. God is setting you up for a blessing right now. You are about to be blessed. You were blessed when you woke up this morning, but God is going to give you two or three more scoops of that. You know, uh, 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 your yoke is about to be destroyed. 
Any, not think about it. Anything that is broken can be fixed. But God is about to destroy the yokes of the devil in your life. But you have to believe. God is so powerful. <laughs> oh, my God. God is so powerful that he stopped the world. Basically, God said, you know what? I'm going to do a spiritual reset. And I believe that God is doing a spiritual reset. It's almost like the factory reset on the cell phone. You know, when your when your phone is not acting right, you may have to restart it or 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 or, or factory reset your phone. After and normally after a factory reset, your phone is somewhat refreshed and brand new. And, and so I thought about it. I said, you know what? Maybe in God's eyes, the world wasn't acting right and needed a reset or a factory uh, restart. People be encouraged. We can use this time, you know, you know, don't look at it as something bad. You know, at first I was like, yeah, but you know, now I'm looking at it like, you know, maybe we can use this time to spend, you know, with our families. You know, most of us that work, you know, we spend more time at work than we, you know, with our coworkers than we do with our own family. You know, so my thing is take advantage of your opportunity and be encouraged, stay encouraged and be encouraged. Now, you have the time to work on that business that you've always wanted to start but never had the time for. Now you can even you can potty train your own child now instead of instead of depending on the daycare center to do it. You can have all that time and spend time with your kids and do it yourself. Be encouraged, people. You know, uh, uh, be encouraged about the spiritual reset. You know, uh, uh, when the word for some reason when the word church comes up, we think of just the building. You know, we you know we 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 have this mindset that. That church is, is a place where we go on Sundays, you know, we, we, you know, we get up, you know, we get our families dressed and, you know, we try to make sure we get to church on time so we, so we can get that good seat, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, and so it's so easy to lose sight of the fact that, um, you know, we aren't just going to church, you know, we are the church, you know, and in the Bible, church is always referenced to, to the people, not a place. And notice how we haven't been inside Liberty Temple in what in about three months, and we're still having church. So be encouraged, people. You know, um, I um, came across something. Oh, I think it was last week, and I read it. And it says something like this: It says, "When you turn your worry into worship, then God will turn your battles into blessings." I'm gonna say that again, so you don't have to rewind it. When you turn your worry into worship, then God will turn your battles into blessings. Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. You know, and I don't know about you, but I'm riding with God on this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it out with him. You know, I'm gonna lean on God on this one until, and I, cause I know God will bring us out. But in order for God to bring us out, we have to pray on it, pray over it, but most of all, pray through it. Liberty, I didn't have a lot. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. And I pray that something that I said today would motivate you, would keep you encouraged, to make you want to keep on keeping on. Again, God is in the blessing business. God is in the blessing business. In the Bible, it says, first shall be last and last shall be first. This is God's spiritual reset. Take advantage of it. He's given us every opportunity that we need. God promises our daily bread. I've eaten every day since the quarantine. Sometimes I eat too much, but I have not lost a beat. And I thank God for that. I thank God that I was that I'm able to be a blessing to help others. You know, a lot of times, you know, we get so caught up into our own little world that we don't even think about other people. You know, but now since this uh, the COVID nineteen is hit, you know, it, it's it's you know. I'm noticing a lot more compassion towards other people. You know, we didn't have that before. You know, God is waking up the eyes of things that's going around the world with all this social injustice stuff going on. You know, it's been going on for years, for many years. But look what God is doing right now. He's revealing it. He's revealing it. God is in the blessing business, but you have to stay encouraged. You have to understand that God hears you. He hears you, but you have to stay encouraged. You have to stay encouraged, people. God will deliver us from this like, he, like he's always done. We've been, in, we've been in trouble before, but God bailed us out. Pray, people. Pray. Just pray. 
and Liberty, I pray to God that today is something that I said today will motivate you, make you want to get up, get out, and get something. So, Liberty, thank you. Pastor Julie, thank you for allowing me, for giving me this space. And um, God bless. You were blessed by those words of encouragement as I was. All of God's goodness and all of God's word, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, was given to draw us closer to him, that we might come into a covenant relationship with God. He has always desired to be in relationship with his number one creation, humanity. In John 14 and 6, it's, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. So Jesus died, you know, for the salvation of all humanity. He even said in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. And he really means whosoever. He died for all of humanity. So today we want to extend the call of salvation to anyone listening that has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If that is you today, today is the perfect day to be saved. All you have to do is just repent of your sins and ask the Lord to come into your life, you shall be saved. And you can do it from your own heart and use your own words as well. So we, we extend that invitation today. And if that's you out there, and if you are willing to accept Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, we, we do ask that you will just follow up with us through our contact information on our website, which is libertytemplechristianchurch.org. And we will gladly walk with you as you walk in your new life in Christ. We're going to so let us pray now. Father, we thank you, God, for this day that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, for all that are, that are on this broadcast on today. I pray, God, that the words that have been ministered through your men and women of God on today has encouraged your people, has touched their hearts, God has given peace of mind, has given guidance and instruction to those that need. I believe that the Spirit of the Lord was moving through each one of those in, uh, sermons of encouragement on today. Most of all, God, I pray that a word was spoken through this time that would lead someone to salvation today. So we, we, we pray for the salvation of the souls of those that are not saved today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your men and women of God all over, not just at Liberty, but the church as a whole, God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have called out to lead your work here on earth. I pray, God, that you will bless every call, man and woman of God. I pray, God, that you will just bless every church all over this world, that your name will be glorified, God, that you will be edified, and the church will be that light unto this whole world. We're living in times, so much suffering, there's darkness all over, we're fighting this pandemic and all. But God, through all of this, I pray, God, that your church would shine like a lighthouse on a hill that cannot be here, that men and women can see the church at work, God, that they can that you can be glorified through us, and it will lead other people unto you. God, I pray for the healing of the sick. In this time that we're in, this pandemic, people are dying, people are testing positive. God, we pray for them, Lord the families that are losing their loved ones through, through this coronavirus, as well as other sicknesses. Even through the midst of this, people are still dying from other things. So God, we pray for all families that have lost a loved one. We pray, God, to, that you would just uh, encourage those that are on the front lines, Lord, that are, that are, that are in the hospital, in different jobs where their life is, is put in danger, harm's way, just to help those that are already sick and needy. We pray, God, your covering, your protection over them. We pray even, God, in the midst of this, many of losing jobs and different things financially. We pray for financial blessings, Lord, for all those that are standing in need. We know, Lord, that you are a good shepherd, and we just pray, God, for the needs of your people. You made a promise to us, and we believe, God, that you do keep all of your promises. God, we just pray today, Lord, for all our leadership, all over the world, not just America, but for every nation, 
in these days and times that we're living in, Lord, that the, that the right decisions will be made, that your people will be led in the path of righteousness. We pray for those leadership from the highest office down to the local officials, even from our schools, Lord. We pray for that form of leadership, that the right decision will be made concerning our children as they go back to, to the schools, the universities. God, all, all that, 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 that has to be decision that got to be made concerning this virus. We pray, God, we know that the, the numbers are going up. But God, we know that you know all things. Lord, I pray that we will walk in wisdom as we battle with this pandemic as well, Lord. We thank you again, God, for this day. God, we pray for the upcoming holiday that is being celebrated now. People are all over the United States celebrating uh, by the 4th. And God, uh, we thank you, Lord God, that that was a day in the history of America. But God, we thank you for the day and the, the liberation of all humanity when Jesus Christ died on the cross for the salvation of our souls, that he came to set the captives free set us free from sin and all other bondages that are happening on this earth today. And I do pray for all of us, God, especially your church, that we will stand fast, therefore, and in liberty and with Jesus Christ has set us free and that we will not be again entangled with the yoke of bondage. That is our prayer on today, God. We love you, we praise you, we glorify you for all your goodness. You truly are good, you truly are great, and you are truly worthy to be praised. For all the things that you have done. This we ask in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Again, I hope that uh, from my worship all the way through down to uh, the words of encouragement that has been shared with you on today, that it was a blessing that your time was well spent today. Again, we thank you for tuning in. God bless. Be safe during this time of celebration here for this holiday. And we want to be, we will, we will close out today by benediction of let, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our Lord must be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here to me. I worship you. You are here. Wipe away your tears. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle work from a promise keeper, light in the darkness. Oh God, my God, that is who you are. We make a yeah.
Chevy you Waymaker, yeah Waymaker, miracle work Promise keeper Light in the dark Oh God, my God That is who you are Waymaker, yeah Light in the dark, oh God, my God, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are. Don't.